Hello YouTube and welcome to this video on my uh, software called Backing Track Maker or BTM as I prefer to shorten it down to. On the screen you'll see a number of talking points and this is what I'll be talking about in this video. So let's get started. The first item is how to obtain the software. Well, the the uh, software is obtained via my YouTube channel, which if you are watching this video, then you have already found my YouTube channel. On all the videos, uh, the tutorial videos and the introductory video, there will be an email link, which after you've subscribed, hopefully to my channel, you can then request the software to be emailed to you and uh, we will, uh, once we receive such an email, my assistant will send you the software. There's no charge whatsoever for the software, as I've mentioned in, uh, in my uh, previous video. Um, we just hope that you will find the, the software useful and make some backing tracks that you will share with us and with others. So the next item, Let's move on to installing the software. Well, there's no real installation process. You know how you've got to click a button and then it goes through a number of questions and then install software. That is not what we do with BTM. All you have to do is when you receive the software, which will be in the form of a zip file, all you have to do is unpack or unzip that file into any folder on your Windows uh, a computer and uh, that's it the installation is done once you've uh, unzipped the file and cre created a folder you uh, start the program by clicking on the btmaker.exe file best thing to do is to create a shortcut for that as I have done on my taskbar here which will show you in a moment um, and then you just simply start the program which I'm going to do right now. When the program starts, this is what you will see. And the objective of this video is to go through and just briefly describe to you all the different parts of BTM. In videos that follow, we will um, show you how to create song files and how to record those song files and all the other good stuff that uh, BTM can do. So, now that we've got the keyboard, um, sorry, we've got the software installed and working, we need to quickly talk about how you connect your keyboard. So your Yamaha keyboard should um, be able to connect to your computer via the Yamaha USB MIDI driver, which is available for free on the Yamaha website. And you probably know how to do this already. So you connect your keyboard to your computer via a USB cable. That's the modern way of doing it. There are other ways for older keyboards, um, but most people will probably have the USB, uh, uh, the USB driver and the USB cable. So that's how you connect your keyboard. Once the keyboard is connected to your computer, BTM, when you start it, should be able to see that device. And here you have uh, a situation where my keyboard is on and it is connected and it's showing up as Digital Workstation 1. The Yamaha MIDI driver creates two ports for use with your keyboard. One is uh, entitled Digital Workstation 1 and the other one Digital Workstation 2. And both of those ports are showing up here, as well as the uh, standard Microsoft uh, Wavetable Synth, which is part of Windows. So once that's done, if, uh, if your keyboard is off, by the way, then that will just simply show Microsoft Wavetable, right? If you then turn your keyboard on and connect it to your computer, you can, you can click on Rescan Devices. And what that will do is it will connect it to the first port um, of your uh, BIDI driver. So that's how you connect your keyboard. 
Let's move on now to describing uh, the toolbar in BTM. So this is a standard Windows toolbar and it has different parts. Uh, part of the uh, at the top here we have a button which uh, allows you to exit the software. That button is uh, the very same as this one here. Um, it's always, you know, Windows duplicates everything, so it's I'm just following the standard way that uh, Windows toolbars are constructed, and it is usual to have an exit button on the menu at the top. Over in the right-hand corner here, we have a uh, a button which is the help button. Um, the way I've programmed this is it will just direct you to click on the help window. So where is the help window? Well, if you look down here, you'll see two tabs. One is song help and the other one song data. So the song help is where you find all the information uh, that you can refer to at any time right inside the program about how to make a song file with BTM. And of course the other tab is the song file data itself. Moving on, uh, we have a row of buttons right here and these are all the things that BTM can do. So there's open a song file, if you click on that you get the opportunity to open an existing song file. Uh, if none exists, obviously you've got to create one and save it first and then uh, you'll have your song file. But I'm going to open this song here called And I Love Her, which is an old Beatles song. And when I click open, you'll see what a song file looks like in BTM. Now we are not going to describe all this information right here because that will be the subject of the next video which will be coming out soon. Uh, what you will notice is that the included in the song file, all the fields that are up here, the name of the song, uh, the artist, year, etc., those are all filled in. Now, when you first create the song, you need to type this information in manually. And then when you save your song file the first time, that information is saved along with the song file. Most important is your time signature over here. And uh, BTM uh, supports all the time signatures that the Yamaha Arranger keyboard support, which is um, time signature starting from 24, 34, 44, which is the most common. Uh, along with 3-4, which is a kind of a waltz tempo, or waltz time signature, I should say. And then you also have the more obscure ones, 5-4 and 6-4. Um, but nevertheless, BTM supports that because the Yamaha keyboard supports that. The next field is the tempo field. Very important. It sets the tempo for your song. And that will be changed to that tempo in the style that you're using. So that completes a description of that area there. Let's now move on to the other buttons. So here is the, the save file button. We spoke about that. When you click on that, it allows you to save your song. And uh, I've already got the song saved, but it doesn't do any harm to save it again. If I click on that, It'll tell me that the song file already exists. Do I want to replace it? Yes or no? If I click yes, it simply replaces that song file. Creating a MIDI file. Now, this is the, the whole purpose of BTM. is to create a MIDI file that contains the instructions to your keyboard on how to play the style, which chords to play, uh, and so forth. Uh, and all of that information is recorded in a special MIDI file. Um, also included are the lyrics to the song into that MIDI file. So when I press this button here, it takes all the information that is displayed down here and turns that into a MIDI file, which I can then save on my computer. I'll click on save here again. Uh, a file exists, so I'm going to replace that file. Now I have a basic um, 
backing track which I can play back from my computer to my keyboard. In order to do that, I will use this uh, uh, program here, which is a free program from the internet called T MIDI. It's a great little program. I've included it with uh, BTM and it plays our uh, special MIDI files. Uh, to the keyboard and controls the keyboard and plays the chords. It's kind of like a super duper chord looper, if you like, and um, and it and it plays the file uh, accurately back to the keyboard. Uh, we've got a special button here to stop the keyboard. This will stop the style if uh, if you decide to stop playing the MIDI file in the middle somewhere, the keyboard will carry on until you issue a stop the keyboard command either from the computer or you walk over to your keyboard and you press the stop button. Once you've once you've created your MIDI files and you've tested it out that everything works, what you would want to do is go to a next step which we'll discuss in later videos of actually recording that MIDI file into a full blown expanded proper SMF MIDI file um, using your keyboard. Now most of the modern keyboards you can record an audio file or a MIDI file and you can do a simple recording or you can do a multi-track recording uh, using your keyboard. We use the simple recording to record the um, to record all the chords and make it into a proper MIDI file. Then we can go forward and we can export the MIDI lyrics from this program right here, BTM, and we can import the MIDI lyrics into your recorded MIDI file to make a complete backing track that you can use as a song file on your keyboard. You load it up, play the song back and you've got all the chords, all the lyrics, and you can sing along or you can play along over the top of that backing track. And that's kind of part of the, well, it's the main thrust of what we want to do with BTM. Over here, I've extended the functionality of BTM now to also make MP3 files. So instead of recording the data as a MIDI file, you can record that as an audio file and that will give you a WAV or Windows WAV file, which a lot of the, the newer keyboards can do right now. And so with that WAV file, the software here converts that into an MP3 file and does the same thing. We can export the lyrics from BTM and import that back into the MP3 file. And that now creates a complete backing track with lyrics that you can use as a, I don't know, karaoke file. Um, I tend to use it as the backing for including my vocals and making a complete song which I then turn into a video but we'll talk about all of those things at a later stage. Um, over here we have um, another free program that I got from the internet. Great program KID3 it's called or KID3 which allows you to add tags to mp3 song files. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Uh, detail. There are heaps of videos on tagging MP3 files uh, with various programs. This one here does it all. It can tag, uh, it can add, you know, uh, album um, information, graphics, files, and whatnot into K3. I've just put it in here because it is free, and this is a, it's a quick way to just access the software. It's included with BTM. And uh, you can do all the stuff that we are not doing um, right here with BTM, which just does the basic tags and does add the synchronized lyrics into the file as well. So we've talked already about the, um, the exit uh, 
button there. One more thing to talk about is down below here we have a status bar and that just gives messages on what's happening at various points in the program. If, you're, if you create a file and you write it, it'll tell you whether it's successful or not. Um, when you use some of these other buttons here, you'll, you'll get feedback from the status bar here to tell you what, what has been done. And that really is the functionality of Backing Track Maker BTM. I hope that uh, you will find this program useful. I do. It's a, it's a central part now of what I do with my music. So I hope that you will find it helpful as well. It's completely free. Nothing to pay ever. And so grab it. Uh, subscribe to the channel, please. And uh, send us the email to get the, um, the, get the software and go ahead and make some backing tracks of your own and share it with us when you've done that. So I want to thank you for watching this video and please look forward to the other videos, the other tutorial videos coming soon, which will describe making of songs, recording of songs and all the other good things that we will do uh, on this channel. Thank you for watching.